this is Craig from Waterfalls of Tasmania. You wouldn't guess where I'm going, would you? Yes, that's right, Westmoreland Falls, which says on the sign here, two hours return. Um, generally, I'm a faster walker than that. Uh, for me, it's about 45 minutes to the waterfall, then I muck around, then 45 minutes back. So actually, yeah, I guess it is two hours with all the mucking around I do. Uh, car park area. And here's the Mole Creek Cast Conservation Area. This is an interesting walk in as much as the area around Mole Creek where West Moreland Falls is situated, it's probably around about five or six Ks south of Mole Creek as the bird flies. And the roads are a bit windy to get to here. The waterfall itself is situated in the Mole Creek Cast National Park. However, most of this walk is outside of the National Park. What this means is that if you're coming to this waterfall, you do need to have a parks pass, which you can get from um, um, Parks and Wildlife Services and the major information centres, which you can find at um, Lake St. Clair National Park, Cradle Mountain National Park Information Centre, uh, also Frasenay, and there's a few other PWS places right across Tasmania. The start of the walk, there's a little sign here, which is the start of the track. So we'll just start walking. The track is easy to follow. From memory, which I'll be documenting in this video, the um, track can get really muddy in places, especially as you get closer to the waterfall. In the last week that I am um, proceeding this walk, there's been quite a lot of rain in the area. So I expect to have a muddy track in places where it can get really sloppy. I'm also expecting the waterfall to be um, flowing more than normal. So let's see what we're up against. This should be a lovely walk. It's a great one for families. So if you've got children, even young children, this is not a bad place to bring them for a good nature walk. I wasn't wrong about um, the track being sloppy. I've only been walking a couple of minutes and cause of all the rain <laughs> walking through. This is boardwalk by the way, but it's covered in water. So at the start of the track, it's um, just sort of grassy, light, low ferns, some eucalypts. On my right hand side, there's a fence line and it's just farmland directly to our right. We'll be moving away from the farmland shortly and we'll start to move into a more dense forest. So the track at this point, which is right at the start of the track, is actually easy to follow. It's not very difficult whatsoever. Oh, so I've been walking roughly about five to 10 minutes, somewhere in between there. And we moved away from that farmland and we're now moving more and more into a denser forest. So the track is becoming more typical of what we find in um, our forest when we go walking to waterfalls. It's generally uneven. We're getting these muddy patches now, which should progressively get worse as we get closer to the waterfall. Here you could very easily see, if I move my foot back, that is um, quite muddy and sloppy. So it is recommended when you walk this track, always wear good hiking boots, preferably ones that are waterproof. Generally speaking, I would recommend people wear waterproof boots anyway when you go to a waterfall. Often you might find yourself having to step into the creek and usually there are wet spots anyway. So far it's delightful. Nice big tree there. So we'll continue walking along. I just want to mention that one thing that does somewhat annoy me about Westmoreland Falls is not the waterfall itself. It's not the track either. Actually, everything is really good but it is the lack of signage in and around Mole Creek especially. This is a great waterfall. It's also a popular one. A lot of people do come and visit West Mullen Falls and not just for the waterfalls because there is uh, fossils that you can find on the rocks directly in front of the waterfall. So there's some really good historic reasons to come here other than just to visit a waterfall and because of its uniqueness it does surprise me that it's not 
sort of publicised much closer to the population areas. Mole Creek's a significant town in the Great Western Tiers as far as the different uh, journeys you could take in and around the Great Western Tiers. So yeah, I'd love to see it in the future where um, councils start to promote what they do have because it's a great, it's a great way of um, getting into nature, seeing some of our beautiful rainforest, as well as seeing and learning a lot about our history. Some areas of this hike have been boardwalked as we can see right here and where the soil is a lot softer and prone to erosion. So some old um, boardwalk has been placed in sections, not every section. There's definitely sections, uh, other sections which are not boardwalked but should be. Hopefully in the future we'll see that change. You can see some more infrastructure as I'm walking through. Um, Walking for about 20 minutes or 15 minutes thereabouts. It's a walk that has a few hills up and down. We have a little scenic look out here that it looks into a gully down, down there. It's just full of trees and ferns. I shouldn't say just full of trees and ferns. It's actually very pretty. And now we've got a series of rock steps which we have to walk up. So we're actually nearing the waterfall now. The ground is has progressively got muddier and muddier. And I just had my first glimpse of um, a waterfall to my right, which was through the trees. You won't be able to see it on the camera, but it does mean we're getting close. It's hard to see, but the glimpse of the waterfall I saw was that just in front of my finger. That is not where Smallland Falls, that's just a smaller cascade. To our left is just another creek, a couple of smaller little cascades here as well. So we're not far away from where Smallland Falls now. Up a little bit further and we'll be there. So I'll see you there in a minute. All right, so now I remember this from previous trips. That's just sloppy, sloppy, yuck, gross, mud everywhere. This is a section that needs to be boardwalked because it is always like this, really muddy and slippery. So, we're actually nearing the waterfall now. We're not far away, probably between two and five minutes, but I'll be taking it very carefully. Oh, look at this. Yep. <laughs> Just watch my steps. Yeah, I'm getting, my feet are getting covered. See, when you do come here, be prepared for it. You have no choice but to go through it. So yeah, definitely wear the right boots. You see there's been some infrastructure put in here in the, in the past, we've got some steps here. Just needs a bit more love. I'll see you at the waterfall shortly. All right, so here's the new infrastructure that was put in a few years ago. Bit of history for Westmoreland Falls. In 2016, massive floods did massive erosion through the area and it prevented us from accessing the waterfall the normal way. The old walking platform was completely demolished. But now on the riverbed, that's Westmoreland Falls, 
And my God, is it flying unbelievable today. This is magnificent. I've never seen it with so much water flow in my life. Yeah, this is pretty. Okay, so I'm a bit closer to um, Westmoreland Falls now. Got a second waterfall on the right hand side here because of all the rain we've had recently. Yeah, this is pretty nice. I have to walk through the water to get to the fossils, which are over, I believe, about there where I'm pointing, that rock there. All right, so there's Westmoreland Falls. And in the rock in front, this is where we can find fossils. You can see one right there in front of me, where I'm pointing my finger. Sorry, my shadow's getting in the way. Another one right there. And if you look closely, you just see a whole heap of others. Right where I'm pointing is another one. There's some bigger ones here, which I haven't found just yet. But you could spend some time looking around at the rocks to find the old fossils. It's just really interesting. And of course, we've got this beautiful waterfall in front of us as well. Such a beautiful spot to see and a great one to bring the children as well. Considering it's so close to Mole Creek, you're looking at a 10 minute drive from Mole Creek and then um, a pleasant but uphill walk to the waterfall, even though it's muddy, this is worth it. Such a great spot to come and see and check out. This is why we chase these waterfalls. So after a week of really decent rainfall, Westmoreland Falls is just absolutely stunning. Even in drier times, it's actually a really pretty spot to come and see, and it is a decent waterfall at the best of times anyway. So if you haven't been to Westmoreland Falls, which is near Mole Creek, I'd suggest you come and check it out. And if you are in the area, if you are here at this waterfall, have a look at the rocks, where you walk around, and also the rock formations nearby. There are a lot of seashell fossils that you can find here. Some are in excellent condition as well. So it is a beautiful spot to see.